Welcome to another reading vlog. Today is July 14th, which is Bastille Day here in France. It is the day that the Bastille prison was pretty much raided by the citizens and fell. So this is essentially a Independence Day for France from the monarchy. And every year there's a military parade on the Champs-Élysées. And since that turns into the street we live on, the planes that are in the parade fly right over our apartments. So that's what you would have just seen in that clip there. I've always wanted to go to the parade and I thought this year was gonna be the year, but we are in the middle of a heat wave, which is why you can probably hear the AC in the background and that will definitely be in the background of every clip in this reading vlog. So my apologies, but yesterday was almost 100 degrees. Today is supposed to be in the 90s and then like Monday and Tuesday are supposed to be 100 plus. So it is not a fun time outside right now, which is why this might be a little bit of a chaotic reading vlog as well, or boring, <laughs> because obviously like I'm not going anywhere. I am staying right here in the AC, even though it's just mainly for the chinchillas because it can't really cool down the, the entire apartment. So it is still quite warm in here. But as long as the chinchillas are fine, we're all good. So anyway, the book I will be reading is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I pre-ordered this back in January, so I honestly don't remember the plot to this or anything at all. And also, like, this is a paperback, and look how huge this is. Like, this is bigger than my head. I was expecting, like, maybe that tall and, like, that wide, like, cut that off and that's what I was expecting so like this is huge but when you open it like there's so much spacing and the font is so large so I feel like it's still going to be a really quick read but yeah it is like one of the floppy ones so that's cool but this is just a monster compared to what I was expecting I do like the cover though I don't know, I like kind of the handwritten font here and everything. However, this came out at the end of June and it's now mid-July. So this wasn't sent to me right when it came out. It took a while. And so I've seen some of the reviews and unfortunately it's getting pretty mediocre ones. So I am a little skeptical going into this, but I guess that's the point of this reading vlog is that we will find out together. But I ordered it from Book Depository and they always send a bookmark with their packages and they sent this really bizarre one where it says scratch and smell and on the bottom it says eau de book because like eau de toilette is like the french thing like for perfume cologne kind of stuff and it's just like what but this doesn't say what it's supposed to be but it shows like pine cones and stuff and so i assume that's what it's supposed to be because it actually smells like that it actually smells really good like, I wish I had that smell as a soap. But on the back, it says, We all love the smell of a new book. It's new, but somehow provokes old memories. From reading with a loved one to remembering holidays in the sun with your nose in a book. That's why we created Eau de Book and replicated the smell on this bookmark for you to enjoy. And then it has another circle here, and so I thought that's what's supposed to smell like a new book. But it just smells like plastic. So I think it's supposed to be just this part, but... Like, that does not smell like a new book to me. Like, that smells like a pine forest, so I'm not really sure what that is. Also, if you want the smell of a new book, like, that's literally what's in the package, is a new book, so... Yeah, new book smell, and it does not smell like that bookmark. But yeah, I thought that was kind of like a bizarre thing to include with a new book. It's like, hey, here's this thing that smells like a new book along with your new book. So I did want to start this reading vlog yesterday, but we got home from our anniversary trip to Mont Saint Michel uh, really, really late Tuesday evening. And so all of Wednesday, I was just dead. In fact, I'm still not feeling very good today, but it's a lot better than the previous day. And so I really wanted to get started. Also, I just realized this is the same kind of yellow. This is the shirt I got at Alligator Bay by Mont Saint Michel. And I thought it was funny because like, it's pretty much two for one because it says like, Welcome in Alligator Bay, Mont Saint Michel. So that's why I ended up getting that. Also, it's Michigan colors, which is where I'm from. So, but yeah, I just noticed my shirt matches the cover a bit. So that's a bit funny. But anyway, let's read the description of this because, like I said, I really don't remember. Okay, it says, Be careful what you watch for. Casey Fletcher, a recently widowed actress trying to escape a streak of bad press, has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont. Armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of bourbon, 
She passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple living in the house across the lake. They make for good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom is powerful, and a formal mo former model, Catherine, is gorgeous. So basically, the main character is a complete creeper so far, and potentially an alcoholic. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning, and the two strike up a budding friendship. But the more they get to know each other, and the longer Casey watches, the more it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye, and that shocking secrets can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. Packed with sharp characters, psychological suspense, and gasp-worthy plot twists, Riley Sager's The House Across the Lake is the ultimate escapist read. No lake house required. Alright, so... Like... Literally the first three quarters of that blurb sounds really generic to me and definitely like something that's been done a million times before. So I do feel like unless there's some insane twist that I did not see coming that's completely original that this will end up being mediocre. And since that's kind of been the reviews, I'm kind of scared that's the direction this is going to go. So I'm kind of paring down my expectations now, but these aren't the kind of books I usually read. Like this feels like mystery thriller and mystery isn't really what I tend to gravitate toward. So I am hoping it's a lot better than what the blurb makes it seem because that just feels so generic. So I don't think I'm going to be diving into this right away. I probably will start this evening. So I'm not sure if I'll have another clip today or not, but that could completely change. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much everything just depends on how I'm feeling in that moment, just because I still feel like I am dying from the heat. Like I said yesterday, it is now the next day. I read some number of pages last night. I'm on page 56. There aren't like chapter numbers or anything, so I don't exactly know what chapter I'm on, but this is very, very stereotypical so far. So my theory on it being pretty generic is correct, unfortunately. It does that thing where the first chapter is almost the end of the book. And so it hooks you in to where you want to know how did we get to this point? And then it starts all the way over from the beginning. So I don't know if you can see those darker lines there that's where it flips back and forth between um the present and the past like just the very first chapter was the past and so then it goes now and this section looks like the one of the biggest ones and then at some point it'll go back oh well now it says now what the fuck okay apparently i missed the thing i don't know but it flips okay yeah now and then there's before so it kind of flips back and forth a bit, and that's what all those dark edges are though. So it looks like it does it a few times, but not a lot. So it won't be flipping as much as I think it usually does in books like this. Also, two thirds of the description on the back has already happened. It literally starts off with the drowning scene and Casey saving her, but let me set, up, uh, let me set this up a little bit before I get too ahead of myself. So pretty much, like, everything is stuff I've seen in books before. Nothing is new, and the people we're following are all, like, white, rich, privileged people. So pretty much there's this lake, and there's only five houses on this lake, one of them belonging to this uh, Casey Fletcher. And her mom is, like, this really, really famous, like, Broadway star, actress, all of that. And she kind of followed in her footsteps a bit, but to a lesser degree. And of course, she's an alcoholic. Her husband died actually on the lake the previous year. And so she's drowning her sorrows in alcohol because you know, that's the only way for women to do that apparently. And directly across the lake from her cabin, or it's more than that, it's freaking huge. But there's the stereotypical glass house kind of place where that whole side that's looking out on the lake is just all glass, so you can easily see inside the house, which is what she does. And we haven't really met the husband there, even though she's like seen him through the binoculars and stuff, they haven't formally met, but she met uh, Catherine, I believe her name is. Let me double check that. Yes, Catherine. She meets Catherine Royce from The Drowning. Like that literally happens right on like page two of the before section and Catherine's a former supermodel the I think the husband's name is Tom if I'm not mistaken again 
and or Thomas or something like that and he is essentially Mark Zuckerberg. He like owns the social media empire kind of thing. The book describes it as a cross between Facebook and LinkedIn, which if both of those exist in this world, then why is this social media platform even needed? So that's who they all are. So you see how they're very like rich and privileged and everything. And the main character actually acknowledges that, which is a bit nice. But then also like in this scenario, there's the mysterious neighbor. Apparently they have someone like visiting, like taking care of their house while they're away. And of course it's this extremely handsome, muscled man that's the same age as the main character. And I mean, she's already thinking about fucking him, even though she's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because blah, 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 whatever. It's still just like, why is this already in place? Like I'm literally 50 pages in and this even the main character says feels like a Hallmark movie kind of thing. So I'm wondering if there's going to be like a major tone shift or something because all of this setup so far is so generic and stereotypical. It's like, it's annoying because it is it is boring. Like that first chapter, that hook, that was obviously good and it makes me go, oh cool, what's gonna happen next? But then everything so far has not been interesting and it's just her drinking. But I'm already building a few theories on stuff, like potentials of where this could possibly go, like if we're gonna go into the supernatural or if we're gonna stay in reality kind of thing. Because the people that live across the lake, um, they're not the first owners of that house. They are the second one. So I'm wondering if there could be something with the previous owner, like all these little thoughts are already starting, but Right now, I'm not really excited to read it, which is so sad. Obviously, like, I pre-ordered this so long ago, and so it's like, hey, it's finally here, let's read it, and it's just like, oh, we're watching a, or reading a Hallmark movie instead. So I will say that this beginning has been disappointing. I wasn't sure yesterday, so I didn't say anything, but this is only the second Riley Sager book I have read. I tend to get Riley Sager and Grady Hendrix mixed up a little bit, and the other one I've read by him is Home Before Dark, which I gave four stars and enjoyed quite a bit. And although I don't remember too much of it, like I kind of remember the twist and that's about it. Where like with Grady Hendrix, I like a lot more of his stuff, but I'm not sure why I confuse the two so much. Maybe it's because of that freaking like Final Girls book or whatever. So this is only my second read by this author. And honestly, depending on how this one turns out, I might not really pick up his other work. I know his last one, oh god, what was it called? Something with the Knights. I think people didn't exactly like that one either, so it seems like he's more on like a downward spiral when it comes to writing at the moment. But yeah, I'll either read more of this this afternoon, evening, or tonight. Right now I'm kind of more just in the mood of reading before bed, so most of these updates will probably be like the next day kind of thing, but I can't say for sure just because I go by my mood a lot and I can't really tell what that's going to be. <laughs> but right now, luckily it's early enough where we don't have the AC up yet, but it's already getting hot in here so we might have to put it up soon. Today is the coolest day of the next like five, so trying to enjoy it as much as possible, but that still doesn't mean I'm gonna go outside. I washed my hair today and I feel like no matter what I do to it, it always just looks like a mess. Anyway, I'm a bit of a dum-dum. I went to film here in my kitchen a little while ago and I forgot that the wash was running, so I pretty much just been waiting for that to be done. But with the AC on, I figured it might be better to try to film in the kitchen and also the light is a little bit better in here. Uh, I'm not cooking tonight though, because we're actually going to order out because we have a big grocery list for tomorrow to prepare for the... I mean, it's still a heat wave. We haven't really gotten away from it, but for the worst days, because Monday and Tuesday are supposed to be 103 and 104 respectfully, which is like 40 degrees Celsius. So trying to like do all the cooking one day so that we don't have to like turn anything on the other two. But anyway, I read about another 50 pages of this yesterday. I'm now on page 101. I haven't read any more today because I've actually been really engrossed in playing Divinity 2. But I actually really had to stand here and think for a few minutes about what even happened in here because it's just not memorable. Like this book feels like it's really slow but also moving really fast all at the same time because Casey, the main character, also I just realized, is it Casey or Cassie? I'm gonna call her Casey. 
So she has only known the neighbors for literally two days and not even two full days. And that's when Catherine, the neighbor, disappears. So in that aspect, it feels like this is moving at light speed because it's just kind of like, why does Cassie care so much then? Did I really just say I was going to pronounce it Casey and then just say Cassie? I don't know. I don't remember even remember what I just said I was going to pronounce it as. But anyway, um, Cassie just is like obsessed with this woman, it seems, even though she's literally just met her. And so knowing what happens in the beginning, how it starts out with like um, the, the hook chapter, essentially, it's just kind of like, why do you care so much? But there was a scene that where Casey acted a bit differently from you would expect and a little away from like the stereotypical. And I appreciated that tiny little moment there, but it was just so short and also really stupid when you think about it because it was something that could have put Catherine in more danger. So the whole thing is really just now starting to get going, I guess. Like we don't even really know that she's missing at all yet, but based on like the events that went down, it's safe to say like this is when it's gonna happen and this is when like they're gonna realize that something is wrong kind of deal but besides that like these characters are just stereotypes and like hardcore stereotypes everything they say do has been done a million times before and i feel like i'm just gonna be repeating myself with that a bit so i'm gonna try to read a bigger chunk of this before i update again i'll definitely be reading more tonight but i feel like reading it in more than 50 page chunks is gonna feel impossible for me just because that's about all I can take in before I'm just like this is just too boring so I'm hoping now that we're at the missing person part it will pick up a bit but like that was one of the big sections where it's like in the before and this seems to be the second biggest section like in the before so hopefully I can get through that this evening and we'll see if I update you then or tomorrow. Welcome to another hot day in the heat wave. I am once again in the kitchen. I'm actually preparing um, some meals for the next few days just so we don't have to like turn the stove on or anything. So I'm getting chicken salad ready right now. Like I have chicken in the crock pot already. I'm about to cut up, of course one falls, some grapes, which look how beautiful these are. Like these are some of the best grapes I think I've ever seen in my life and some celery and some pecans which I don't have like another camera or anything to like set up where you can see me chopping which I don't think that's interesting anyway so I'm just kind of going to talk a bit while I do that but like that will be for tomorrow and then we have stuff for like um poke bowls so that way we're just eating cold fresh stuff and not things that need to be cooked because <laughs> today is supposed to be in the 90s and Monday and Tuesday are going to be the 100 plus days and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself it's just like need to prepare for it a little bit so we don't have to go out or make it um, any more hot in here than it needs to be so I'm gonna get started on chopping that yesterday was it all last night yeah I read before going to bed I got to page 183 so I'm pretty much like halfway through right now and so how it's been so far is the first hundred pages really feel pretty bland like there isn't a lot of tension that's the word I was looking for like you don't really feel like this anxiety or anything over what's happening like there isn't just this buildup of anything it all feels very flat and now these almost next 100 pages have ramped up the tension a bit like i felt some anxiety over one of the scenes in particular that was happening but it was just for that moment and after that it goes right back to feeling very slow and i don't know if it's because everything is happening in just this one location so they're not like moving a lot or anything but a lot of it is honestly just straight up boring and like the characters are pretty much just talking with each other over what they think is going on, like there's no hard evidence of anything that's happened and I think that's gonna play into the twist obviously, like I feel like everything is just kind of a red herring kind of deal, like I have several theories of what's happening and it can go multiple different ways, but some things are a little too convenient and like I don't really 
think this is a spoiler at all, but like they actually called the police, well not really called, um, Boone, the basically like love interest of the book, he knows a cop from the, in the area and so they call her and she comes up like kind of unofficially and they tell her everything that's been going on and she's like well we need hard evidence kind of thing and she ends up coming back like where I stopped they had just kind of like talked to her and everything but she does something that not only feels out of character from when they first introduced her but is like a cop would not do this kind of thing. It doesn't feel believable at all, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I feel like this is only happening to reiterate the red herring more, because I've had three, uh, not flashback, three chapters now where it's in the now, and those are only like one and a half to two pages long, and that's where she has this guy tied up in her house and that's not a spoiler either it's literally the first page of the book obviously they're trying to make it seem like a certain person but they've never said his name and i think that's also to throw us off and just kind of make the power of suggestion really do its work there but pretty much everyone is suspicious and i think that's kind of part of course for this type of book like no one is 100 percent like good i mean casey is freaking spying on her neighbors with binoculars and stuff so i mean obviously she's not really doing the right thing either i just feel like the more the book goes on the more we're gonna find out kind of the past of some characters and how no one is really innocent kind of thing the direction i do hope it goes in is the least obvious one i feel but I feel like that would be the best and I'm kind of curious to see if it is going to go with the obvious choice or not. My phone ran out of space so I just had to take care of that. But anyway, um, one thing I'm actually really getting sick of in this book is the main character's alcoholism. So I really wish that- oh there's no seeds in these, cool. I really wish that I had started to count how many times it says bourbon in this book because it is truly astonishing. I don't know if I said this earlier, but the whole reason she's even at the lake house is because she's an alcoholic since her husband died and her mom sent her there to kind of stay out of the, oh no, there are some seeds in here, to stay out of the public eye because the paparazzi kept following her, trying to catch her drinking because she had been to rehab and everything. But now that she's at the lake house, like literally the only thing she talks or thinks about besides Catherine is alcohol. And even all the characters around her, everyone's always commenting on how much she's drinking. And this Boone guy from across the street or down the road or whatever it is, he is like a year sober. And so every single character has some discussion with alcohol. And it's like, please stop, this is insane. So I definitely would say that alcoholism is a major content warning in this book. Like I'm pretty sure they've talked about alcohol more than the missing person at this point. And like, I'm, I'm done, like I'm so tired of it. If this is what the whole rest of the book is going to be, I'm going to scream. Cause like every uh, day, it kind of does a quick rundown of like what she has done until like something interesting happens. And it's pretty much like, oh, she had one vodka, then another, then she switched to bourbon and she's on her third, oh, maybe fourth glass. Like that's literally how it sums up her days, just very quickly like that. And oh my God, like it just surprises me. Cause I mean, obviously with her like being drunk constantly, she's an unreliable narrator. She doesn't, she's never freaking sober. So I'm assuming maybe that has something else to do with the story, but like, I don't ever want to read a book, book like this again. And so right now, this book is probably a two for me because besides like her literally nonstop drinking, there really isn't anything wrong per se with this book, but just based on all the stereotypes and just how generic everything that's happened so far is, it's just meh. Like not even average right now, it's just okay but i would say it's very low to borderline like one and a half so i'm very very hoping that something is going to happen with the twist and the reveal that will bump it up to a three like i don't think at this point since i'm literally halfway through the book and it's a two right now 
I don't think it's possible for it to be a four star read at all. I just like, I can't see it transforming that much in the second half, but like, please at least be a three star. Please at least be an average read. Like that's all I'm asking at this point. So I'm hoping, I don't think I'll finish it today. I think I'll end up finishing it tomorrow since I read about like 80 some pages last night. I'll probably do about the same tonight because there's 350 pages and I'm just about at 200. So yeah, if I read today and tomorrow, I think tomorrow is what I'll end up finishing. But who knows, it could get worse and I just end up DNFing it, we'll see. <laughs> so I didn't end up reading this last night like I had planned originally. We ended up watching a movie actually instead. Uh, Incantation on Netflix, it just came out a few days ago I believe and it's a horror movie of course and it actually was pretty good. I definitely recommend it if you are a horror fan, especially like found footage or um, like foreign horror, especially like Taiwanese, Japanese, Chinese, that type of horror. But anyway, I just got done reading another chunk of this. I actually only have 60 pages left, so if I really wanted to, I could probably finish it up right now, but I am kind of stopping myself a bit. I kind of want to drag out the suspense a bit since there's actually stuff happening now even though it's not exactly making it that much better, but pretty much this has changed into a completely different book. It's such a sudden switch. It's literally within like a page, everything changes. The tone is completely different now. The pacing is completely different. It just feels like we are like have our uh, foot on the pedal, like to the floor kind of thing. Like this is just going a million miles an hour now and everything is happening all at once. And I feel like everything that's happening is just completely invalidating the previous two thirds of the book. So that feels very strange. And I also officially dislike slash probably hate, although I know people say hate is a strong word, the main character Casey now, which just kind of sucks. So we are definitely on the twisty turny path right now. And I think it is bumping it up to three stars, but obviously since I have those last 60 pages, how that ends is really gonna make it or break it. And it's frustrating because what is happening is kind of interesting. It's also one of the theories that I thought was possible. Because like I said, everything people say matters in books like these, and that's kind of what's coming back right now. It does feel like it's coming out of nowhere though, even with that. There are not as many hints as you would usually expect in here. And obviously there's a lot of red herrings and stuff, but that is part for the course for these type of stories. But it's just such a bizarre turn from being so stereotypical and so generic into what it now is. Like, I'm getting whiplash from this book right now. Either later tonight or tomorrow I'll finish this. Like I said, I am trying to, now that it's to a part that's actually interesting, trying to draw it out a little bit to so just kind of feel that suspense a bit longer. But I'm on page something, there's no page number on there. I'm on page 289, so pretty much exactly 60 pages left, but today is day one of our really super scary high temperatures. We made it to 101 degrees today, it is 99 right now currently, it's like 830 or something like that, and tomorrow I just saw it's supposed to be 106, so yeah, it only gets worse from here. But until tomorrow, and I will give my final thoughts then. Tiny girl. So cute! Look at you! Look at you! Get not clean! Cute, cute, cute! Ooh. So yesterday ended up being a bit more interesting than it probably should have been. So we ended up breaking a lot of records, reached like 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like 40 to 42 Celsius. I'm not sure on the exact temp in Celsius on that, but it was noticeably hotter in here yesterday than it was on Monday, even though there was only like a four degree difference. I don't know if it's just because the heat was so constant, like we had to have the AC all night previously, or what it was, but it was just straight up miserable yesterday. And on top of it, there were fires, Ooh, I almost dropped my book. 
there were fires breaking out across the city like there was an explosion in a restaurant that caused the fire apparently a motorbike caught on fire there's a fire by a metro like there were so many little fires happening in the city and then the evening toma noticed it first there was this really weird burning smell and i was more in the stream of the ac so i really couldn't smell it until i walked over by the window and it was really strong and to me it looked like it was smoky on that side of the apartment and it turned out less than an hour away from us there was a forest fire and there are just wildfires all over the country right now but this is the closest any of them have been to us so like the whole city of paris just was covered in smoke and we had everything closed up so we couldn't see that and so we didn't know what was going on so we were super paranoid that something was happening in our building or maybe our ac was on fire like something like that so we were just like really concerned but didn't find out until really late into the night that it had been a wildfire so yeah the world is literally on fire right now and it's just insane but good news it did end up raining last night and so i don't know if you can hear i don't have the ac on right now so we shouldn't need it today at all. It's supposed to stay in the 70s. I think our high is 80, which is usually the cusp of when we would turn the AC on for the chinchillas. But like the wind feels so much cooler. It is humid, like you can feel the rain in the air and it should be raining more throughout the day. So I'm just really happy about that because yesterday was just so messed up. But because of how miserable it was in here, I didn't read anything. I didn't read My Lady Miss Rob. I didn't read any more of this book. Like, it was mainly just trying to stay cool. So my plan now is to finally finish it. I feel like this book has just been so drawn out, but I also feel like that's a testament to how much I've lost interest in it as well. Like, obviously it isn't hooking me very much or isn't like drawing me in very much if I wait two days to finish the last 60 pages. So I think that says something right there, but I'll finish this and come back with my final thoughts. Well, I finished it. Um, yeah. I feel like my brain is already instantly forgetting about what I just read. Also, I need to mention before I forget for the millionth time, another reason I chose to read this is for Books and Lala's Literally Dead Book Club. This is their monthly pick. And that just kind of happened to match up. She does tend to pick more newer releases. And since this just came out, it was their July pick. And I didn't find out till after I had gotten it that it was actually going to be part of that book club. And so I do try to participate here and there. So I will be watching the live show because I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts on this. I've actually been reading some more reviews and stuff. So my final rating is a three, but I feel like the more I think about it, and the more reviews I read and stuff and kind of dwell on it, I think it is closer to a two, but for now I'm just going to leave it at a three. I don't want to be repetitive on what I've already said about the book. The ending keeps up with the pace and that tension that this whole last third seems to have. But what's really strange is it feels like this book ends three different times. It's really weird. Like it kind of wraps up some things and you're like, okay, this is ending, but then it keeps going and kind of does either another twist or kind of wraps something else up. And then it does it a third time. And it's just a bit drawn out. Like I feel like 50 pages could easily be eliminated from this book. My main issue with this is actually the point of view we're seeing everything through. We obviously follow Casey and we see everything through her eyes. We see her thoughts, like we're in her head kind of thing. So there are some things that we should already know since we are Casey in this book, but that's not the case. It's like a, it feels like a lying by omission kind of thing, but by the character themselves, it's very odd. And I really don't like that because since we're seeing everything from her point of view, we should know the information she knows, right? And so since that's purposely done to make some twists more impactful and whatnot, I feel like that just really lets the book down and almost invalidates the first two thirds of the book with the last third. And it's just kind of like, why would you do that? I don't know. Like it, it's just so weird to me because I can see why, but it doesn't make sense. And that's the really frustrating part of it. So I guess I've learned that's 
not one of the things I enjoy in a book. I do appreciate how easy this is to read. I feel like if I was more invested in it, I would have flown through it. I do enjoy Riley Sager's writing, and so I'm just like, since this was only my second book by him, I'm like, do I want to try and pick up another one? I don't know. I really did enjoy Home Before Dark. Like, I, I think I said previously I'd given that one four stars, but I don't know. I don't want to read anything else like this. Like, I know Survive the Night, which is his release right before this one, I believe, isn't doesn't have very good reviews either, so I definitely don't think I would read that one. Also, I think the ending was spoiled for me from reading a review of this one. I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't, I definitely don't feel any desire right now to read more of his work, and I definitely don't think I'll be pre-ordering anything else of his in the future unless the description sounds amazing, because even the description of this for me, it came off as very generic and stereotypical, and that's what most of this book is, so I do feel like the blurb is pretty accurate for how bland this is in the end. And also, if you need a content warning for alcoholism, I definitely would recommend not picking up this book. Like, do not. It is constantly mentioned. There's always talk of different alcohols. She is always drinking. And there's even a character in here that has gotten sober. And so there is quite a lot of discussion around um, being sober and being an alcoholic and stuff. So if that is an issue for you, I would definitely steer clear of this. But I think that's about it. I'm not sure there's much more I can say on this, and I don't really want to, I think. But like I said, I already feel like I'm forgetting about this book. I don't feel like it's memorable at all. I feel like at best, it's average. And at worst, it's just a rehash of stuff we've seen before. So thank you for hanging out with me while going on this weird, like, heatwave reading journey. But it is always appreciated, and until next time, bonjour and au revoir!